All right, looks like we are live. Live on YouTube as well. Awesome, awesome. Hey. Mike, how are you? Doing good. Good stuff. Nice, good, beautiful Thursday. As you can see, we got a we got a new guy here. We'll uh, introduce him in just a few minutes. Chaz will not be yeah. able to uh, join us today, so me and Mike are gonna head up head up this ship, or at least do our best. Uh, Mike, Try to do get... a good episode. We'll see if we can do pull a, off a great one without Chaz. We'll see. Maybe like good plus, you know. Good plus, yeah. Yeah. Good two point Who knows? All right. So, and you're getting it shared out, yes. Yes, yes, we're getting you shared in the local client uh, SEO community, local client takeover, all that good stuff. Awesome, awesome. All right, well, welcome to the SEO Vault, episode 180. We're joined today by, of course, myself, Bucky Helms, my co-host, Mike Milas, and special guest, Joey Randazzo. This is the SEO Vault, where we analyze all the SEO news and filter the industry noise so you don't have to, and where we candidly discuss... The latest test results and tactics that are moving the SERPs. As a reminder, if you're interested in having us look into any other your campaigns, we offer free SEO audits over at web20ranker.com. And of course, don't uh, miss out on the upcoming SEO spring training where Chaz, as well as myself, will be speaking, uh, joined by I don't know how many other people. It's a lot. Um, we'll probably talk about that a little bit and drop links to that later. Uh, in this episode, we'll be talking about huge brand updates you can't miss, SEO testing updates, all the SEO news you need to be aware of, and of course, if you missed any of our past pot episodes, remember you can go to seovault.com or find them on all your favorite streaming platforms. Sound good? Sound good. <laughs> Sounds great. Thank you, Bucky. Awesome, awesome intro. Yeah, Absolutely. So, Joey, tell us a bit about yourself. You're an agency owner. Yep, yep, yep. I own SEO Growth Partners based in Portland, Oregon. Um, website is portlandseogrowth.com. Started about four years ago uh, and stumbled my way through to where we are today, right? Just sort of figuring it out. Worked for an agency before. we got a team of about 15 folks, most of which are military spouses. Pretty cool community we've been able to employ. Very and talented people uh, we were, heard were very it, right? involved with uh, content creation um, as our sort of bread and butter when it comes to, to SEO as well as looking at, you know, all the other aspects of it. But excited to be on the show and, uh, and chat with you guys. Heck yeah, heck yeah. So you you got into SEO. Uh, I was reading your, your questions and answers thing there. It said you were a writer and just kind of fell into SEO from that, yeah? I loved writing in college. I wanted to do it after college. I had no clue how. And uh, I got introduced with a gentleman that was creating a uh, an agency just for dispensary SEO, actually, out of Colorado. He was one of the first to, to get involved with that back seven, eight, nine years ago. Um, and he threw me into the deep end of the pool. He said, hey, we need content for our site, for our client site. I knew nothing about SEO. I just watched hundreds of hours of of content like this, YouTube, uh, articles, and just sort of figured it out, right? Um, which I feel like a lot of people in this space, that's kind of how they got into it as well. Yeah, absolutely. So just to be clear, you got into SEO in one of the most highly regulated niches at the most yep. highly regulated time, yep. and you were having to write in it. <laughs> yep. yep. It's like crash course into like, hey, welcome to SEO. Yep. You picked the hardest you know, niche. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, the, the legal folks were very involved. I can assure you, they were looking at everything. I mean, we were just, we were just kind of making it up, right? Like, yeah. It was regulated, but. They didn't people, even know. People were, play, people were playing with a lot of stuff back then. People were getting Google ads through. People were, were doing some really interesting stuff. So y'all, um, and y'all were, taught them what to regulate then. <laughs> right. Yeah. You just, throw, you just throw everything at them. You see what sticks. Accounts get, you know, Google ads accounts are getting banned. You know, you're getting penalized left and right. Um, but people didn't really care at that point. They were just trying to figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, just realized I did not have. All right. There we go. Sorry. We, we are live on YouTube. I'm sure you probably were just seeing audio for a while because I had the going live thing on the screen. I didn't turn that off, but we're all good there. 
Sorry about that. I just looked over and realized that. This is why we need a production manager, Mike. What happened to that? I don't know. I don't know. I <laughs> talked to whoever's in charge of the SEO vault. I think that? that's you right now. I'm talking to you. <laughs> Okay, sure. Um, I'll put it on my list here. On your your long list of, like, your scroll-out list? I ain't gonna lie, though. That probably is on my list, and I believe it is to talk with Sophie, and yeah, there's there's a lot there, so fun stuff. Thanks for, thanks for putting me on blast. You're welcome. Right away, Bucky. I'm here for you, buddy. Um, always glad to be here. <laughs> So what uh if you had to pick a niche, Joey, what would it be? Would it still be cannabis or no? No, you know, we, we've kind of evolved to be all over the place. Um which which was something I wasn't expecting to do. But uh from local chiropractor to uh SaaS companies to you know uh video production agencies, it's kind of all across the board. Uh so yeah, no no niche over here. Gotcha. Gotcha. Cool. Well, Mike, you want to jump into some brand updates and we'll get yeah. back to Joey in a minute? Yeah, sure. Um, not too much crazy stuff. Uh, since last week, the annual test report, I think, officially did go out. So you should be able to find that on our website now. We'll get that shared in the comments for you. Um, also, we have been working really hard on getting out our niche SEO campaigns. So we're looking for middle or end of this month latest to get our de uh, dental SEO campaign fully launched uh, and then have a full line of niche specific campaigns we're going to be rolling out after that. So be on the lookout for that real soon. Uh, the 2023 local marketing mastermind as well. I'm, I need to get with Sophie. Uh, We're going to have some new news about that coming very shortly. So be on the lookout for that too. And just to follow up um, from last week with SEO report. Uh, do you know, Bucky, if we ever got that by location finished and live? I honestly forgot to check about that before we came on. I will. I will check. I'll actually jump in discord while you're doing the news and, and I'll get you an update. I'm fairly positive. He did message me and say that that was live, but I will check. Okay, cool. Um, and then we, we also did get uh, some new internal messaging updates done, which should help with the, the communication a little bit on our end, which is actually leading into a lot more updates. I'm actually not going to get into that right now, uh, but we do have a lot of huge updates coming for SEO reports. And then the other one, uh, our client login dashboard, there is a beta version of that out right now. I don't believe we've actually been able to get in touch with uh, some of the bigger clients that are running multiple campaigns yet. I know I said that last week, but we should be getting to that hopefully uh, by the end of next week latest, where we'll act, uh, activate a part of your account where you'll be able to create individual client logins for your clients. They can sign in, add locations, edit locations, look at data studio reports, uh, and also use it as a one-on-one -on -one support between your agency and your clients as well. So a bunch of features there. So again, be on the lookout for those also. And that I believe um, is about it for the update. Sounds good to me. Um, you did get the weekend deal, yes? Oh, no, I did not. Uh, yeah, I forgot to even put that in here. Do you know the weekend deal? Probably? Yes, so it's 30% uh, off the 2022 Local Marketing Mastermind. I had to scroll down about a half inch, and then I would have seen it underneath my image. So thank you. Thank you, Bucky. 30% off the 2022 Local Marketing Mastermind recording. That was uh, that was an awesome one. So unfortunately, when you didn't get to make it, that that was a great time you'll miss. But again, we'll have new new information about this year's. So get excited about that. You can grab the recording. Thirty percent off. Uh, Saturday, Sunday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. This Don't weekend forget. only. This weekend, Saturday and Sunday only. So get it while it's hot. We need to uh, maybe this year we can like couple up all of our masterminds and make like a, a big download product for like every mastermind we've ever done, or at least all the recordings that we still have tracking those down may be tough, but I know, I know we for sure have the last two years. 
which yeah, in and of itself is probably 40 hours worth of training, if not more. Yeah. I and know, downloadables. I know more than that, too. Yeah. Get it now for nine ninety five. One time <laughs> offer. But wait, there's more for ninety seven dollars. We'll send you all of it on an MP three player. On an MP three player. Not an i not an iPod on an MP three player. It's a Zoom you know, a little, to be a specific. Bogus, yeah. Refurbished. The yeah, refurb zoom that we bought in bulk from China. <laughs> uh that's good stuff. Good stuff. Let's see. Comments. Um, Rayhan says, Hola, fam. How's it going? He says, How you doing, Joey? Doing great. Jordan wants to know if we can send it on a floppy disk instead. Yeah, if you send us a thousand floppy disks, we might make that work. A floppy disk. I mean, how much would 1080 video, how many floppy disks would one hour worth of 1080 video and audio be? I don't know, but it sounds like a measurement that we would use in America, to be honest. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, we just stuck with the floppy disk. But, uh, yeah, I mean, how how big was a floppy disk? I don't even remember. Like a mag or something? I I think the last one I remember was like a, an 8 megabyte. 8 meg? Maybe yeah. was like the largest I remember, but... Could be yeah, like those zip zip drive ones that were like 32 meg or something. Yeah, but who had a zip drive? It went from like floppy disk to zip drive very for a short period of time and then jumped into CDs. The same people who got that DH DVD Ultra or whatever that too. Yeah. They 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 bought the the eight track player, the DVD Ultra. Your your uncle that had all the technology stuff because he wanted to be the tech guy in the family. Exactly. Uh, what was your first computer, Mike? Uh, PC Junior. PC Junior. What is a PC Junior? Who made that? Uh, Mac, I think. Oh, okay. I don't know. It had like it had like it had no hard drive. I know. I remember that. So my first computer, I think I was probably eleven years old. It was a hand me down from my uncle. Like when they got Atari and were playing with the Atari, the Commodore 64 was in his uh, in his storage room. And I was like, can I have that? And he was like, yeah, I mean, it, it doesn't really do anything. It's just, a, you know, got some floppy disk games on it. But that was literally my first machine was a Commodore 64. And it was yeah. so bad. <laughs> that was a, it was an IBM. I don't know why I thought it was a Macintosh. That was, yeah, that was later. Anyway. Yeah, no, it was an IBM. And yeah, it was the same thing. You just had, had no hard drive. You had to put a floppy disk. Not like the old school, flop, like the actual floppy, floppy disks in it. Yeah, the, the Commodore was like a DOS boot is all it would yeah. do. And then you'd it load, was, it was a computer, you'd load really. like the legit floppy disk, the one that was like plasticky papery, you know. you throw that in there and type in a, a run prompt. And then it would open right. Dragon's Lair and I would get to level three and that's all I could do. Right. Welcome to the SEO Vault Retro Edition. And really, I wasn't old enough. Like, I'm not old enough to say Commodore 64 was my first gaming rig because that was out several years before I was even old enough. So, yeah, PC Junior technically wasn't my first computer. It was, like, the first family computer, and there's pictures of me at, like, three sitting in front of it, like, banging on the keyboard with the screen lighting up with some program my dad made to make it flash colors when i hit the buttons on the keyboard yeah or something like that look how so, far we have come it's insane yeah yeah it's definitely it's definitely been a little a little bit more now we have super advanced ai and i i read that they're putting like ten thousand, uh you know terabytes of storage on diamonds and shit or something like we're gonna have super computers with artificial intelligence built into Boston robotics machines, like in the next three to five years. Yeah, all of that. Go ahead, Joe. My, my wife, my wife's pregnant for first, and uh, I was just thinking through that. Like, when my kiddo is like, you know, five, ten years old, what, what's it gonna look like for him? Right, like it's gonna be on another level in five, ten, fifteen years. Yeah, it de it definitely is, and it's it's not even going to be anything we're able to predict. 
Like the speed of the speed of automation, the speed of technology from here forward. Now that AI is openly accepted, it's going to be insane. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's already exponential, so it's just going to like go parabolic pretty much. Like kids that are born nowadays are going to see like technological advances within thirty days that would even like realistically now would probably take us years with where we're at. Yeah. But it's it's just gonna be crazy. Super exciting, kind of scary. Pretty terrifying. <laughs> yeah, SEO's dead, so you can just guarantee that. <laughs> SEO's dead, people. It's dead. It's been dead. It was, it was so, dead with the invention of every other technology, so it's gonna die very soon. Nah, it's gonna change, but I got a I got a good question for the writer in the room. What do you think about AI content for for I SEO mean, and for web web design for any type of content really I mean it it depends right for me like we it depends on the topic but a lot of it is is pretty decent for general stuff you know you you ask it to create some content on on you know how how is glass made or write me something about Jupiter's moons or something like that it'll spit out something really good if you're talking about some local chiropractor that has this very particular style and they want to reference their university experience and um, talk about some story about a client that they had four years ago that had this specific type of car accident and how that impacted their training methods and how they then, you know, like, it's not there yet. And so um, it depends on what you're trying to do, but for a lot of folks that want something hyper specific to their experience and their expertise and uh, trying to relay that expertise and you know, specific stories of their life in content where we're not quite there, but for the general stuff, I mean, it's, it's moving quick. Yeah. I guess once we all have brain chips, we'll be, we'll be there. Huh? <laughs> Just AI yeah, will quickly go. All right, let me, let me access his chip real quick. And I'll tell you all right, about yeah. it. Oh yeah. Yeah. You're referencing that, that memory that you had back <laughs> when you were seven years old, better yeah. than you can remember it. Yeah. 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 I mean, you would, you, people, if, if what you're talking about is really like the end thing, people are going to be able to instantaneously manifest things with their brain between AI and 3D printers and just like, I didn't be able to think of something and like my little 3D printer is like form out of nowhere. I want a steak, just 3D print that steak and just the, you know, the microwave goes ding and there's like a full meal inside there on a plate, like in the sci-fi movies. So you're going to have the Zapier integration in your brain chip then? My brain is going to be the Zapier <laughs> integration, bro. I'm going to I'm going to OAuth everything into my brain. That's how crazy it's going to be for me. I'm going to probably I would I would honestly do it just for fun because that would be imagine just giving every big tech company full untethered access to your brain. That's not scary at all. No, oh, good. <laughs> let's see i was checking comments i don't know if they're loading for for you guys i had to like reload facebook on my side to see some of them uh yeah the uh jordan pierce let's see here let me scroll up top rehan hey rehan how you doing he posted that oh he was the one who said the floppy to I had, a th I had a thought on one thing that was discussed with the AI and, and landing page content. One thing that I'm pushing for is a bunch of video testimonials. I mean, it, it depends on the, the business, but I think one thing that might be interesting over the next couple of years is actually doing things that don't scale with AI to prove that you're better. Yeah. You know, like getting getting legit video testimonials from, from yeah, if you're a chiropractor, like before and afters and um you know a, a video of someone saying hey i'm in portland i was skiing at mount hood had an accident broke my leg went to this you know physical therapist here's the before here's the after now is that going to help you rank i don't know but but when people land on that page that might be a differentiator that folks um could use to their advantage because it just makes them look more real i don't know yet if you're going to be able to get video testimonials 
uh, like deep, deep, deep fakes created and all that type of stuff. I'm sure it's coming, right? Like just a deep fake video testimonial telling the AI to spit out exactly what you want before and after. But it's something that for the short term, I think could be interesting for folks to uh, try to make themselves a little more real. Yeah, I could definitely do that, especially the long term, right? And you could do it probably pretty poorly now. But yeah, this, like there's there's definitely getting keeping a human element in your business and leveraging those human elements where AI just isn't there yet. That's definitely I think I think you're right there. That's key, especially in the upcoming years for especially for the industry. And I forgot what I was watching, but someone said the scariest part about AI to people is the fact that it takes away the the skill. You no longer have to spend years mastering a craft to do something. Like it, it takes away everything. All that's left is the the creative part, essentially. Because just because you spend ten years like practicing painting or, or you know mastering a craft doesn't mean that you still will have the creativity to do something new and innovative with it, right? But AI completely levels that playing field. So keeping that human element is going to be massively important for sure. Yeah. Well, and traditional marketing still not going anywhere. Like you're still going to have clients that want that proof of concept. They want to see testimonials. They, they want to know about the brand, you know, from a personal tangible aspect, you know, so, I mean, that's not going anywhere. Really AI when it comes to marketing or SEO, it's going to make things faster and easier. It's not going to take away the expertise that you're going to need for it to be good, you know, and it's certainly not going to take away the expertise that you need for it to be great for your client. You know, I mean, it, it's it's going to give you frameworks. It's going to give you, you know, content guidelines. It's going to give you, you know, everything but that personal touch that, that you know, Joey mentioned, which I think is fantastic, you know, that you, you guys are focusing on that because I, I think that's kind of the, the groundwork of everything else. Like anybody can make a website sound like an expert in the field, but I want to know who that expert is. You know, I want to know what that expert's done. I want to know that expert's experiences. And again, that's, you know, like you said, that's stuff that AI doesn't know. There's no way to put a personal touch on that unless it's already out there, you know. Sure. Yeah, that's why content creators and personalities, you know, celebrities, influencers, they're just going to become increasingly. And yes, you can mimic that with AI, but people are going to gravitate towards that human aspect. Which really quick started to change the subject, but why is Facebook telling me that I need to send 200 stars to see my comment on our live video right now, which costs money? Where's your you like, made a you made a comment? I didn't make a comment. I'm just on the live video on Face, like Web20 Ranker is live now, and I'm on the live, and I see Jordan Pierce and other people's comments, and then I see a little our logo, and it says send 200 stars to see your comment here. And when I click it, it has 50, 100, 200, or custom, which only lets me put a minimum of 10. And then it says your comment and attached stars will be displayed to the creator and others who view the content. Huh. I didn't even you know, know that we could buy stars. I didn't even know we that stars could be given. We don't get any money or anything for it. Well, no, that's like, actually a that's a setting in facebook for business pages and for influencers that you can actually tip for that content so it's like live tipping in a in a live broadcast this creator is not earning money with stars <clears throat> well then why does it say buy stars so facebook's making oh, money oh, off your we're not earning money with it according to this little disclaimer at the bottom here with the learn more button and then the so the other thing I wanted to mention is by the way I was able to post a hyperlink with an anchor text on Facebook. If you go look in the Facebook group right now, what? I literally and I did it by accident because I was copying and pasting content from from a Google Doc which had a hyperlinked anchor text. When I copy and pasted it, it didn't remove the link; it just left it in the anchor. So no way. SEO, go spam those anchor brands. <laughs> Go spam those Facebook anchor links. Wait, wait, you did that in a comment or in in a post? Uh, in just go, post. go look into the local SEO community. Oh, wow, I wasn't able to do it on my personal page. I think I was able to do it on the or on my personal, yeah, my personal. I was able to do it on the, the page and in the group, 
So like pages and group seemed like they might be able to. But when I tried to do it on my personal page, I was not able to. So But it was a copy and paste from a Google Doc. Did you do it on mobile yeah. or desktop? I'm on desktop right now. So if I go to local SEO community and I scroll down, I there's one my post is hyperlink anchor text on Facebook. And if you click it, it'll take you to Web20 Ranker, I think I put it as. Yeah. yeah with a Facebook CID. Um that's crazy. I've never seen that. <clears throat> oh, you can hide. So I, I saw this where you can highlight it and you can make it a heading or bold or anything, but I don't see a link option anywhere. Like it let me copy and paste the link in the hyperlink anchor in there, but I don't see it available in the Facebook post. So again, a little side thing I noticed just now, wanted to shout it out because one pissed me off and one was interesting and they both had to do with Facebook. So. Yeah, that is actually very interesting. <laughs> Let's see. I want to yeah. test one. <laughs> Mike, did yeah, you want to jump into news? Yeah, let's go do the news. Yeah, go write a whole paragraph and hyperlink hyperlink the whole thing and then paste it on Facebook. I bet it'll all hype. That'd be funny. All right, yeah, so let's let's take a look at the news. We have uh, quite a bit going on. Some of this I actually looked into. Some of it I still have to do a little bit more research. Uh, yesterday, it looks like there was possibly some search volatility, speculation about the product review update. So, of course, let us know what you're seeing as far as that. Um, Google's added some new features to performance max campaigns. So if you are doing paid ads uh, and if you tried performance max campaigns before or uh, ha are doing them now, definitely take a look. Looks like they're trying to create a little bit more value or show a little more value around those campaigns. It's been probably years since I played with them. Um, but I know before it was kind of like you were just throwing money out there and, and hoping Google did something good with it. And it was not very transparent team, but um, if you're using those and you've noticed the difference, let us know in the comments too. I'd be interested in, in hearing what you're seeing there. Uh, Microsoft AI search is now on mobile and it does look like uh, that they have been doing some updates. So it's not being as erratic and crazy with its responses. I have not had a chance to use it. I was on the waiting list and then have just been very wrapped up in things the past couple of weeks. So uh, I'm excited to try it out. Let me know if you've tried it out as well. Uh, Google did some updates to their move, site movement documentation, more so just specified, I think specifically if you were moving to like a different variation of the url like different you know url extensions or if they were like all the same pages but just on a different domain not too much crazy stuff there's stuff we probably all are were aware of before but for the people just coming in probably good for them to understand those things uh google maps on your android phone or i think it's on apple too this is android i honestly don't have an apple uh, but in google maps now there is a business profile tab previously you had to go to like your profile and then there was like a, an item in the menu that said my businesses there's now a tab so more integrations into the map app which is really cool um i personally like the map app more than the old google business app so I'm interested in what other people think of that. I don't feel the same about the interface on the front of Google search. I think it sucks. Um, but there has been some, some nice features that have been implemented there too as well. So let me know what you're seeing there. Uh, and then lastly, just on the, the general Google news front here, Google is testing blocking some content for Canadian users. I believe it's some, yeah, some news content because of those laws or uh, that they were talking about. I can't remember if it was a tax or what. We had talked about it last year, I believe. So interesting to see Google um, following through with that. Oh, let's see, what else we got here? SERP changes. I know, oh, that's what I wanted to add in here. I know earlier this week, there was a lot of people freaking out about the map pack just completely disappearing from search, it seems. Um, there's also uh, an update here about people also ask, supposedly showing less in search. I honestly had the map pack when I went and checked for my main searches. Um, I, I only saw the people freaking out on Facebook. Uh, so I made my regular SEO is dead comments and moved on. So let us know what you experienced if, if you had one of those uh, freak outs this week or noticed the issues with the map pack. Google was, I guess, drunk for a short period. And lastly, we have some 
fun uh, comments from our friends at Google. This first one, I think this was John Mueller. Yeah, good old John Mew. <laughs> letting us know that embedding local reviews and collecting, uh, embedding local reviews collected by third parties does not help with web search rankings. So putting their reviews on your website is not good for search, although could be beneficial for trust. So, I mean, who cares what John Mueller thinks it does for search? Uh, John Mueller also makes some comments about writing content for chat GPT, probably some of the most ignorant and arrogant comments I've heard from John Mueller in a long time. Uh, pretty much saying that, oh, well, your content you shouldn't, isn't good if you are using AI to try and make it better. I guess, or, or pretty much is acting like AI has nothing to bring to the table whatsoever for content development. So yeah, um, we could talk more about that in a bit. And then uh, good old Gary had some helpful uh, tips about recovering from the helpful content update. Uh, unfortunately, this is one I honestly didn't get to read through. I know personally that the helpful content update is usually not just like a single page of content uh, or something like that. Um, but let me see if I have anything here. So I know it's a site-wide thing. Generally, you want to address that. Uh, it may be the case you are ranking badly on some things that Google has now decided <laughs> is a thing they don't value anymore. Uh, it's going to be the timing's unclear. I honestly don't. What, what's the? Did you read <laughs> this, Bucky? The, I honestly didn't even see what the the suggestion is. There's a Q and A on PubCon just in the list here. I didn't get a chance to even read it. Yeah, yeah I'm kind of running through it here. It's basically just saying that the the timing is unclear as far as how quickly you can come back from it, which we already knew. Oh, okay. Like, so yeah, there are some. So pretty much, he's saying the same thing back in our old friendly uh, penguin penalty days, where even if you fix an issue, you know, spammy links or whatever, could be three months, could be nine months, could be a year, could be eight months, could be two weeks. Um, there's rolling updates. So the site-wide issue, generally, though, like I said, like focus on quality across your site. It's you know, thin content issues on a bigger scale. Generally, does not like you have one or two bad pages, and just because they're fixed doesn't mean that they're gonna they're gonna reverse. So, uh, the other thing Gary mentions here that authorship, uh, he, well, he he actually talks about the fact that authorship and quoting authorities um, is not as helpful as most SEOs think, as well as like disavowing uh, links and so on. So, like quoting, I guess, like Wikipedia or is general authoritative sources and things like that does not appeal to the authority of Google. So if you have any thoughts on that, let us know. I'm more interested in the, the AI updates. Have you guys had a chance to play with Bing, Microsoft at all? Has anyone seen that? Very much. Actually, actually out. I've heard, like I said, mostly chatter around the groups. I haven't really had a chance to look into much new anytime recently. No, I mean, I haven't played with the, with the Bing chat. Um, I just, I don't know that I'd care as much. Like it's, it's not something that I have time for, I guess, <laughs> I guess, you know, if, if, you know, if, and when Google launches theirs, you know, with the amount of search that they cover, you know, the, the majority um, was it like 95 or 96 percent of search or something like that? Ridiculous, but I mean, that there were like 98 or something that matters to me, point. you know what I mean? Yeah. But I, I really don't go to Bing for much. Um, and it's you know, it's just a chat API that they're using, so I can use that chat GPT. Yeah, and I feel like I feel like is Google gonna rush to push something out when are people even are real people using some Bing chat to like. Hey, you know, this, there are examples of, Hey, write me a, uh, a week long, um, paleo diet, uh, food calendar or whatever, and then create a corresponding grocery list with it. Like, is, is anybody actually going to take that and, and use it? Or are they just going to continue to search? Have they been searching? I don't know. I haven't, I haven't, I don't know enough about it, 
I feel like Google rushing to compete with Bing when they got 98%. I feel like that's not Google's approach to uh, try to put out some chat feature directly in, in response to, to Bing. Uh, but Well, yeah, I think what Google saw OpenAI get like 1.2 million users in 24 right. hours without any advertising. So yeah. they said... Yeah, we need we need 1.2 million users in the next 24 hours without any advertising. So well, we need to get on that shit. <laughs> from to to hear some SEOs report, it was you know Google search dropped or the usage dropped like 12 percent or something ridiculous like that. I was like, I don't know if I believe that. It, you know, just because people were using Chat GPT, playing around with it, I don't know if it affected search that much, but. I mean, it was a code red at Google. They were like, hey, work on this immediately. And they had a big meeting, and the CEO called it and was like, we need to roll out a chat a chat GPT competitor yeah. quickly. So it, it's the numbers. Yeah. But, I mean, yeah, same I mean, thing for, you know, disruptive industries like social media. Like, TikTok was insane, and it still is insane, you know. And, but Bing could become a major player in search. If this is the next big thing in search, uh, no, because Google's going to roll one mm. out that's going to be better than Bing's. Like Google's you been in AI. That. Oh, for sure, Google's been in AI way longer than Microsoft, yeah, and they already AI own. AI still still the best language model I've seen out there, and Google's already. I mean, how did their stock do when they did that little? Their little because like like Joey said, if they rush to market and they put out something inferior, people will jump ship. Yeah, but they're not and rushing to market with nothing. They've been in AI for so many years. They already have they, natural language mo language models. They're just not used I mean, by they're, they're consumers. Rushing, they don't issue a code red because they've had this plan for the past five years, and this has been a well thought out. Thing well, no, they've, they've had, had in the work. Probably. They've had a bunch of different language models. I actually read well, into it. Yeah, no, obviously they've been using AI for years. I mean, they have to have language models. They're literally in an indexing and databasing business. Of, that's, of and data. that's that's what I'm <laughs> so, saying. They're just going to make a consumer friendly version of that, and that's already developed yeah, all they're all, doing is everyone putting... already hates google see that's that's what i'm see everyone already hates google ai is now more abundant and more readily available to the average user so there's a massive amount of more competitive bing doesn't need to create some freaking hyper competitive algorithm for indexing links and determining authority of sites now it's completely leveled the playing field as far as uh delivering data yeah. to an end user because AI, like you don't need a search. If, if Google, and so Google could implement AI on top of their database, maybe it maybe make their search better, but Bing can do that too. And Bing can partner with five other language models and integrate them. And Google's a behemoth. They're probably going to want to purchase everything, build their own. There's, the point is there's going to be so much more competition that I would not be surprised if we don't see other just major contenders I don't feel like search is the good, the right term for it, though. This isn't search. This is more than just like a search engine. Yeah, we're not replacing right. search engines. You well, it's a like it's search engines replace directories. It's more you know? of a a smart home device, like a, an an assistant. You know, that's kind of more yeah. what it would be. But, like an assistant researcher. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm I'm uh I'm excited to see what Google does with information now and what they're willing to show like we all know that you can go to DuckDuckGo and get a completely different search than you're going to see on google like google shows you what they want you to see and they hide a bunch of stuff that's not politically in line with what they do but with you know twitter and facebook both coming out and saying yes we did hide stuff yes we did take money from you know multiple governments to hide stuff and like it's kind of opening Pandora's box. I'm wondering if Google is going to follow suit and if that's going to be in line with whatever AI they release in the natural language models. And if it is going to be more of an open information source instead of, you know, they show you what they want to show you because it lines up with their, you know, thoughts and, and ideologies. But so Google could fail massively if others take that stance. I and think Google so. Doesn't. And that, I think that's so. what I'm thinking might happen. Because at the point where you could say, like, hey, I want to learn more about this, and Google's giving you information, but Bing's popping up and saying, like, are you looking 
from a conservative view or would you like to learn from you know an open like religious like there, there's all these things that need to be taken into account when people are looking for information oh and flip side doesn't give that flip side <laughs> Is AI going to know what you want to see based on your search history and only show you conservative views if you're a conservative? Or yeah, is it so, going to be open open as well? I mean, but that's the thing. So that's where the competitiveness is going to, I think, really come in because there are going to be models that will let you do that. And there's going to be ones that don't. And Google is going to, I think, fight it to the end. They're not going to want to give up control yeah they're going to want to track everything that you do with ai record it all like every single chat if google bought chat gpt right now you bet every single chat that you were entering in was just a giant profile mm -hmm. with your own trained api on their system that is personally built for your engagement like like megan okay that's what google would be doing with <laughs> yeah. every single chat right now you would have your own personal Megan built around your IP address and browser, you know, plugins and stuff. You wouldn't even need to create an account. They would just know who you are by what you've done in the past two minutes and you're doing right now and your computer and everything else. And then they'll, yeah, Google, they'll put that in a chip in your brain and you'll be well, fine. See, and that's, it's, it's, so is Elon Musk going to partner with Google? <laughs> he starts giving those things away for free. I'm running. That's for sure. Yeah, but, yeah absolutely. <laughs> open source chip. Yeah. Get them for free implant. Stick your right, finger in a power outlet to get an upload. It's going to be it's, it's going to be fun. And I I do hope someone gives Google a run for their money. They really need to I think evening I the playing field needs to happen. I mean, I I yeah. we've discussed it before like I like Google products. Um I'm not a super huge fan mm -hmm. of them hiding things and, you know, not showing a real search um, and them trying to guess at your intent when you make your intent very clear, like, this is what I'm looking for. Don't show me this other bullshit just because they pay you more money. Like, I don't the like that. The question, but The question that I've had is, it comes down to me of a, a discomfort level, right? It's a story that I've heard of is dogs laying on a porch and it's laying on a nail. And someone goes up and says, your dog's laying on a nail. Like, shouldn't you do something about it? And the guy sitting there says, once he gets uncomfortable enough, he's going to get up and he's going to move. I think that goes with the majority of people that use Google. Is, is something like this going to make them uncomfortable enough to move? I personally don't think so for the majority of folks. It's going to have to be something really uncomfortable to get the average person who doesn't know anything of what we're talking about here to stop using Google is my perspective. Yeah. Uh, well, and, and the answer to that is when is the media going to get behind it and start making it a story? Right. You know, because that's that gonna make, is that going to make people uncomfortable enough? Yeah. You know, it, it makes me think back a little bit to DuckDuckGo. I remember there was a small chatter in like friend community back then of, you know, hey, like Google's taking all your data. Like you got to switch. You got to switch. I went to a liberal arts school. Everyone was freaking out. No one switched. No. No, well, we we all just accepted it because they made stuff. life they made life <laughs> yeah, easier. Everyone, everyone just talked about it. They wanted to be big talkers and say I'm a good person and I'm going to stop supporting big corporations and people stealing my data. And they talked about it and they didn't do anything about it. Yeah. So I, I I don't I don't know. Is this the same thing? Right? I don't know. Yeah, I think it is because it makes life easier, and that's what everybody wants is something to make their life easier, and that's why we don't care if Google takes all of our info because but it I makes our life easier. I don't think Google's going to see, but I don't think Google's necessarily going to do it better is the problem. Like, I don't, I don't think Google's going to do, do it do better. They, than do they have to, because do the, does the average person know that the, the, the other solution is going to make their life 10% better or 15% better. And they're going to well, 1.2 million people in 24 hours heard about chat GPT without any marketing. So that's that's the point. But who, but who are those? But who are those people? Right? I don't know. Who are, who are the people that are signing up for Chat Chat GPT? It's it's not the average Google searcher. Well, no. But the second that, but like, but like Bucky said, it's ease of use. The second someone else realizes that they don't have to search something, click on a link, read through a blog post, and get to a recipe, 
the second and even right now we see more and more specialized ai softwares coming out for attorneys or accountants or even just like uh like cooking software and stuff little apps on your phone that you can just like take a picture of your fridge and it'll tell you what to make or something these things are going to take away from search like right. not not just like the that's why i said calling it search isn't yeah. right it isn't fair because sure. search on, on online used to be you go to a directory site and there was an alphabetical list of all the websites that you could find and you would search through a directory <laughs> and then that turned into a search bar but now it's not it's not a search bar and even google you can take a picture of something in reverse image search but now with ai you can the it changes the whole game so I'm not thinking people are going to leave Google because they're leaving Google search. I think I, they're going to leave Google because something better is coming. You know what I mean? Like there's a whole new industry is going to emerge and it's not going to be just search. It's going to be, you know, Neuralink. It's going to be. Yeah, as we discussed, AI. it's going to probably be something we can even predict. Right? Yeah, it's look exactly. Different than anything we can even try to wrap our heads around right now. Like Neuralink already makes Google almost pointless. If you take Neuralink and AI, put it together, Google's literally pointless. Yeah, I mean, it, and I mean, we're talking down the line, obviously, but the fact is, though, is there's a perfect example of how Google will end up failing in the search game. Yeah, long term. Well, know, eventually, you, yeah, like like you said, you won't need Google search. You'll just already know. Yeah, you know, and, and that's what and, they're afraid of. But that, that's what Google's afraid of, I think. But that index has to come from somewhere. That training model or that data set has to come from somewhere. And that's where well, I think Google is going to hit the top of the the rung as far Google's as... Google's got a big index, but I mean, big indexes are everywhere and licensed like nothing. Well, they, it's, like, not that they have a, it's not that they have a big index. They have the index right now. And they have stuff in, you know, secondary indexes that they don't want to show us. And like if they use yeah. everything they have... In a training model, I mean, it's insane. Nobody can compete with that, you know. But I'm thinking AI is going to make most of their algorithms obsolete eventually. Is my point. I mean, yeah, probably. Or it'll. <laughs> who knows what it's going to spiral into? That's exactly. existential clear, stuff. The, I don't think this is like end of 2023 or anything. Like I'm just talking at like big picture level. Like I'm not trying to pretty like oh Google's not going to be here in two years, people. Yeah. Like I am. Well, it's it could maybe, but I'm definitely not. I wouldn't bet on that. <laughs> it, it's going to come down to moral compass of these companies and like what they're willing to let AI do. And I, I feel like that conversation is a tough one for any company to have. Like, how much power do we want to give this thing? You know, how much do we want to allow it into the lives of our consumers? And, you know, the consumer trust, too. Yeah. Like, how many people won't get in an AI car right now just because well, the, they don't the, trust it? So the generation after hours, you know, it, and the ones following that, they're not going to care. <laughs> like, exactly. They're just going to grow up with it. It's going to be normal to them. My dad's yeah. generation, the generation just before me as well, like, they hate it. They don't even want alexa devices in their house like oh they're listening my to parents us said self-driving cars wouldn't be here in their lifetime yeah my parents are still telling me self-driving cars will not be here in their <laughs> lifetime i'm like you're still alive buy them talking about buy, buy them a smart device and say here learn <laughs> it's actually happening I, I tried to explain the the chat gpt where it's at nah. my dad just retired and he's a developer and he used to joke about the fact that some days they'll just have computer programs that code computer programs for you and he won't have a job yeah and i was like yep yeah, it's already started i'm a i'm a computer programmer i'm a i can develop php and wordpress plugins now yep because i have a program that does it for me i love it we got real existential there for a little while. Yeah, I'm, I don't know. The rest of my day is going to be a little weird. <laughs> <laughs> we like to have some fun. Like I said, we kind of just run with it. Um, AI is going to be fun, and I'm excited. I, I, I don't think like overnight Google's going away. No one should fear about that. I'm going to keep joking about SEO being dead every time I see anyone like freak out about something, though, because I think that's the biggest running gag in the SEO industry. Three. Yeah. <laughs> Anytime yeah. anything happens, the eight pack turned into a three pack. Oh no, I see it was dead. I forgot about that. Did you guys see the the maps drop out of search? 
this week? I didn't see personally, but I did see some, you know, friends that obviously posted about it. And uh, I'm wondering, and I don't know why it would, but I'm wondering if it had anything to do with um, the reviews in search, uh, the product review update that was actively rolling out, whether or not that had something to do with it, um, which I, I don't think it would. Um, I mean, obviously, Google reviews are there, but... That's not what the product search or product review updates about. It's actually about product reviews on your website. But I actually te- uh, twittered uh, at John Mew and asked him about it, and of course he doesn't know who I am and probably didn't see it, so I did not get a response. Maybe next time I will. But yeah, he he'll like usually come idea. out and you know when something like that happens, he'll usually come out and say something about it, but. It was for a very short period of time. I think it happened for like maybe a couple of hours the other morning, and that was it. Yeah. So I'm willing to bet it was just a, an update. Yeah. You know, yeah. like they were roll, like doing an update, like switching servers or whatever, something little thing, and gone for a minute. So. And anybody seeing any uh, any weird stuff with product reviews or or their sites tanking that have a lot of product reviews? I haven't heard anything, but. I think it's I think it's gonna probably affect like very large sites um, with a, a bunch of reviews, bunch of product reviews. Um, and it's basically just targeting like low quality reviews. like you know, just oh, this is a five star and there's no content with it. Like if your site's just full of those and they don't look you know legit and they're not not high quality with you know good experiential wording and that sort of stuff. You may see a drop. So, any of you guys out there that are managing those type of sites, if you see anything, let us know. Yulia on YouTube asked, "Where is Sophie?" I'm not sure exactly what Sophie's doing. She actually sent us a picture of her and her uh, boyfriend sitting in front of a tent. So, I'm imagining they're either camping or at a music festival, one or the other. So, she likes to go to those. Uh, business growth ready says a lot of chat GPT buzz was on social like TikTok. Yeah, it's it's kind of hit the mainstream, uh, especially in you know generations below us. Um, and mainly, it's just people trying to get it to say stuff that it's not supposed to say, <laughs> which is pretty funny. Mostly people trolling AI. Yes, that is probably. Mo- I see more people posting about like funny things and trying to do things with it that they don't actually use and will never actually use than hearing people actually using it at scale or long. Like I know I can name like three, four people that I know use it every single day massively. Like my attorney uses it a lot and it's super helpful, but most well, out of those 1.2 million people, there's probably like, 30,000 that really use it for good use, I think, would be my bet. Cool. All right. I think we're about to the end here. We don't have anything else. Let's check. uh, I don't see any more comments, and I don't know if they're all loading for me. Who knows? Yeah, Um, I didn't see anything else either. Maybe everyone didn't pay their stars. Buy your stars and pay pay stars so we can see your comments. I'm gonna I'm gonna jump in on the admin side of our page and see if there's a monetate monetization we can turn on. Because if it's suggesting people to give us tips, then why not? You know, next week you that's give bottom us line. Stars, comment <laughs> below. Give us stars. Yeah, ask a question. Two stars. You can, we'll you answer have to put it. Put a minimum of ten stars. We'll answer it for ten stars. For every hundred stars you give, we'll give you an answer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Come at us, bro. Oh, man, that's so unlike us. Charging people for information. <laughs> By the way, sign up to the, the weekend newsletter. We should have an SEO mad scientist this week. I got someone helping with the test now, so I got to go check out with them what's going on there. Oh, yeah. Actually what are you testing? testing? I mean, we have tests running for citations, um, but not just like Structured citations, unstructured citations, like we're testing the geo network, specifically how our brand networks perform ter- versus niche networks or geo networks and um, 
niche citations versus generic citations versus sec secondary citations, all, all pretty much everything you can think of that is a type of citation we're testing actively right now. So, so more things that might change our product lines. That's great. So I have to yeah. learn something new again. <laughs> I generally try to test things that'll make our SEO better. Yeah. So yeah. it's not just a waste of our time. But yeah. Well, and, yeah. and there are things like the last update that we did to the monthly GBP, we removed, uh, what was it? It was the um, the Google Stacks. Like they, we just, yeah. the, all the testing that we did was like, hey, these aren't working anymore. They're not doing any, any good for us, you know. So we pulled them out. Like, there's no point in doing them. We replaced them with something better. Now we've got the uh, entity stacks, which are actually doing really well. Exactly. But that was it's from Mike's we... testing, you know, and while we pulled it out of there. It's like, there's no point in doing it. It's kind of a waste of time. Yeah, I mean, you got if, if you're not going back and testing very specific SEO strategies, like, preferably once a year. But if it's been, like, two plus years, then... Yeah, yeah, I can I can guarantee that you're probably like the eighty twenty is so far off at that point. You know what I mean? Like you're probably spending twenty, like eighty percent of your time on twenty percent of the results. Yeah, and then if you go back and retest, you can get back to spending twenty percent of the time on eighty percent of the results. But as, as things update and change, it's just gonna it's gonna happen and. I, there's so much that goes around about citations and local. Do they help with rankings? Do they do anything? Like, do I need a Yelp page or is that just going to, it's going to market my client, right? So that's really what led to probably this one, uh, specifically after we, we saw the decline with Google Stacks and, and all that stuff. Um, you know, how much does an optimized brand link help versus a social signal versus a niche citation? Um, is it worth it and is the price worth it really so it's, it's, well, uh, I'll drop the link to that one more time and then we'll call that a call that a show if you think sounds good Where is that well I had brand updates they're gone you deleted them didn't you me yeah in the itinerary no they're right here what all right there's a Whatever. big picture of Maybe. the SEO dashboard login. There. Oh, there it is. I changed the I changed the anchor text because I was playing with it earlier. So SEO Mad Scientist, here's the link. Uh, yeah, anchor text link. I wonder oh. if it works in comments. It did not work in comments. That's why I changed yeah. it earlier. I actually tested it. I got there before you, I, and I did. I was able to make a comment on the page too, though. So I, I actually have one in the group. I just had to know if it still worked, and it did. Nice. All right, Joey, thanks for joining us. You got anything else you wanna you wanna drop in there? Oh, no, like I said, uh, I got I got some existential thinking to do later today, and <laughs> <laughs> if I have a if I have a crisis, I'll blame it on you guys. There you go. There you go. <laughs> um, All right. Good. Well, this <laughs> has been another episode of the SEO Vault. Uh, as always, Mike. It's been great chatting with you, Joey. Thanks for coming on. Hopefully we'll get to see you again sometime. And uh, visit seovault.com for past episodes. They're also on YouTube. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And uh, we will see you guys 